Why should we as Americans try to look out for people who are non-American before even ourselves? There's a huge Difference. Offering free resources being food, water, shelter, clothing to tens of millions of illegal aliens means that they come in and compromise the integrity of our sovereignty as a nation, take away the right of Americans to self-determination and autonomy. I think that that's not a good result either. This is coming from two people who were born outside of America, who moved to America, and we realize that this is how third world countries are created. 82 to 97 is a great difference in IQ, um, especially when I'm a person with a 175 IQ. So, like, yeah, sure. Um, Huge shout out to our friends over at Allegiance Gold for sponsoring this video. Is Joe Biden responsible for the border crisis? I think so, yeah. Absolutely, but I think there's a bigger concern. They're not only entering our country, we have an active invasion, and now they're lowering the requirements for the military to enter the military. So that makes you wonder kind of what the war agenda is going forward. Uh, he's definitely responsible, but he's obviously clueless. Do you hold him accountable for it or no? Joe Biden, best president ever, ever, by far, ever. I think that what we're seeing right now, he's responsible for it. I think that the 25 states trying to put an end to it and then the other half agreeing with his administration is bullshit. People in his base that don't want him to fix it because, in my opinion, they're, uh, they get votes out of it. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about power. He cares for kids a lot. You know, I would trust him with my child. I don't think anyone's responsible for it. He's not responsible for the border crisis. He's not responsible. Yeah. Who do you think is responsible? What's going on there? Who, who's responsible for the border crisis? Yeah. Corporate America is responsible for the border, border crisis. If the Republicans would pass what Joe Biden wants them to pass, we'd have a lot of things solved at the border. Right. Wait, wait, do you mind if I ask you what, what they're looking to pass? That's kind of based, honestly, like shows up, says something retarded, refuse to elaborate, walk away. <laughs> okay. Do you think that it exists? Do you think there is a crisis at the southern border? I definitely think there is um, some sort of, like, I know a lot of drugs come over the border. Um, I don't think anyone's responsible for the crisis. There's always a border crisis in America. Of course it's a crisis. They're bringing in drugs. They're bringing in all these things, but ultimately I don't see I don't see a solution that either the left or the right can realistically implement in a short period of time. So, Like on a real note, the the border crisis is his fault. Just, just a terrible president overall. I think we all get that simple sentiment. No, everybody's responsible for it. Yeah. Why, why is he South suing America Texas for trying to enforce the border? Because that's the job of the federal government. To sue Texas for enforcing the border? It's not Texas's job to enforce the border. It's the federal government's job. Yes, it is, and it's not being enforced. Well, it's not being enforced the way you want, but... Well, no, no, they're just letting everyone in. No? Do you mind if we ask you uh, why really quick? We're running a bunch of people saying yes. They're putting up barriers. Now, Joe Biden is trying to prevent them from doing that. Why do you think he's trying to do that? Joe Biden, we have the highest number of Border Patrol agents that we've ever had. Yeah, it's not about Border as, Patrol, it's as, about policy. As a, as a, a country. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, his uh, the Homeland Security uh, Secretary uh, is still enforcing the same rules that any Homeland Security Department has ever did in any administration. So that is a myth that he's not enforcing things at the border. You know, yeah. actually, he has some of the toughest rules at the border than Trump and o Obama put together. So, really? yes. So we're actually out here. I mean, I, I think that he's just deliberately sabotaged the border in my view. Uh, but also, I think the facts really point to that. You know, he, he's simply not enforcing the law right now. Texas is trying to get their border under control and actually, you know, enforce the border. And Biden sent lawyers to sue Texas to prevent them from doing that. His first thing they did when he got into office was actually uh, pull us out of the Remain in Mexico agreement. Also, uh, you know, basically reinstating catch and release as well as permanently halting the uh, construction of the border wall. Those three things, as soon as he did that, illegal immigration skyrocketed. How do you explain that if, so if it's not his? That, uh, well, really quick, how do you explain wall? that? Well, I, I think that he probably did that one because it's, I, we know that the corporate pockets that he's probably in. Like I mentioned, I don't think he's doing too much 
of really anything, not just for the border, but for really anything in, in general. So I said the border crisis, the responsibility of it yeah. is corporate America because at the end of the day, corporate America does not want, you know, the prices of American labor. To, they don't want to pay. You they don't and want I to agree on that 100%. American labor. That doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat doesn't or Doesn't that hurt Americans? Uh, doesn't that, that hurt, hurt Americans? That hurts Americans. So they shouldn't be blaming their president. What they should be doing is revolting against, you know, yeah. corporate America and making those people pay uh, pay the real prices of our of our labor you know I understand what you're saying I actually agree with what you're saying there however when it comes to him tearing down successful border policy that was working under Donald Trump uh, and then immediately seeing a skyrocket in uh, illegal crossings at the southern border and it's been breaking records literally every single month that goes by and not just that breaking records of terrorists getting caught at the southern border uh, uh, illegals not getting caught at the southern border and actually getting away from border patrol. They're called gotaways. Six hundred thousand a year we're seeing right now. So, so, but that's why people. That's why I would say that he is being. He should be held accountable because he deliberately removed those policies that were helping. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, I, I definitely get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, essentially, right now they basically just gave the southern border to the cartels. They control everything. Joe Biden's border patrol. He has about 90% of the Border Patrol on busing services and administrative duties, essentially. So, uh, you know, they're not properly protecting the border because there are drug runners that cross the border. There are armed cartel members. There are terrorists. There are all sorts of people. And the federal government is supposed to keep you, him, me, us Americans safe. It's literally the primary job. So if you don't know who's coming to the country, do you see why people actually are holding him responsible for not enforcing the border laws? So, I mean, our entire government is, I, I would blame our entire government for not um, participating on these issues. All right, everyone, let's take a few moments to talk about today's sponsor. One thing the media is actually really good at is distracting you away from issues that you should actually be focused on. While the media is telling you how great things are under Joe Biden, China, Russia, Brazil, India, in South Africa, basically half the world's population, created BRICS, which is a massive economic alliance poised at replacing the dollar with their own currency. The consequences of this could obviously be dire, so it's important to ask yourself if you are prepared or are you gambling with your financial future. This is why many of my viewers have invested in the one thing that's been proven to be stable for centuries, Gold, from the people that I trust, Allegiance Gold. They've earned the highest trust ratings in the precious metals industry. I've been working with them for well over a year now, so you guys, I can tell you with confidence their relationships are based on integrity, expertise, and impeccable service. Go to protectwithklug.com today or call 844-335-KLUG, and you guys, right now, you can get up to $5,000 in free silver with a qualifying purchase. Again, you guys, it is crucial that we are protecting our financial futures. Again, go to protectwithklug.com. That is protectwithklug.com or call 844-335-KLUG. Let's get back to this video. You're not blaming our government for Mexican cartels. For uh, actually making, making it easier, making, making their the job immigrant. easier? Yes, I do. Yeah. All right. Yeah. How do you, how do you not? You know? If you're not protecting the border. Who's buying all the drugs? Americans. So it's it's Americans' fault because people are in America are addicted to well, drugs. Well, we're buying the drugs. Yeah, partially. So right. that's your argument to not crack down on the cartels at the southern border. It's part of the argument. Yeah. I happen to work with. I honestly, I happen to have a career where I work with parolees right now, and they are just laughing. They're laughing about this stuff. They're getting drugs from it. I've had clients that have died from the fentanyl crisis. I'm a drug counselor, and it's all because of this bullshit. Right here. I'm not sure how much of it just comes over the southern border. Um, like I know fentanyl comes from overseas and stuff like that. Um, so I'm not sure he's responsible. Um, overseas, down to Mexico, through the southern border. Well, no, over overseas meaning from other other countries. China. I, I wouldn't say specifically China. Um, Primarily China. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying we're making the problem worse by using the drugs and making a demand for the drugs. So, I mean, there's things that we can do about rehabilitation and drug prevention. We could do more things that maybe stop the demand for drugs, right? So you're thinking if we lower the demand, this is going to be like a 20-year process, by the way, of what you're talking about, is we get our, our society to kind of wane off the opiate crisis, even though it's, on the, it's, it's breaking records right now, 
uh, maybe the drug cartels will go out of business is what no. you're kind of getting. Of course not. <laughs> of course that's not what There's I'm saying. There's going to be less of a demand. No, you're taking me it's down not, some rabbit hole. It's not a real hole. conversation. You're it's taking not me down a real rabbit conversation. hole. Like crazy. Come on. Of course I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm telling you that cartels are controlling the border yeah, well, right now because of the current crisis that's going crime on right now. in the United now. States as well? What? Do you believe they have organized crime in the United States? Yes. What does that have to do with yeah. the southern border? Well, you're... I'm Joe Biden. This is... I'm from Texas. Yeah, there you yeah, go. we're here visiting. Yeah. that piece of <laughs> That dude can suck a bowl of Have you noticed a serious uptick in those fentanyl deaths uh, oh, among absolutely. your work? absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. As I mean, I've been a drug counselor for 27 plus years, and there's been more people dying from that, and we know that that's coming in from the border. And you know what? Screw him. He knows it, too. He well, knows it too and he doesn't care. A, a lot of people that we're talking to today are kind of walking by saying it's absolutely not his fault. He has nothing to do with the border. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not. Absolutely. No, absolutely not. not. You mind if we ask you why? What the heck? It's not his fault. It's not his administration's fault? They're suing easy, Texas. Easy, easy, easy. He's got a better hat than you. Do you disagree with those people? Uh, yeah, I disagree and I think he's being puppeted by other people because he can't even speak a sentence. He can't even speak a sentence, and I think he's loaded on something, too. I think they're living in delusion, to be honest. I mean, they're just trying to shift the blame to this latest thing that they're trying to pin on uh, Republicans. And this whole thing about trying to say, well, the Republicans won't sign this bill, and it's just election year politics. He could have done it in the last three years. Why did he wait till, like, right now and everything so he can sit there and pin this on them? As all of a sudden he comes up with this and says, oh, if I, you know, add funding for Ukraine and add funding for all this other stuff that I want, they're going to turn it down and then I can say, hey, look, they turned down the border the border thing and it's their fault. The administration controls the border. They, uh, they're in charge of uh, border control and they've told their people to stand down and that's why we're having a scandal right now. The Supreme Court's allowed them to cut wires and destroy the walls and, and the barricades that help protect us. God bless Texas. They're standing up for their, their borderline. They're putting that razor wire up there. They're trying to stop the flow. Nothing wrong with that. And then he makes an order that gives the Border Patrol uh, permission to, to take it down and move it. Why would somebody do that? But how do you think uh, the situation would be different, uh, you know, actually be different? if Trump was president right now. There doesn't, they, they just needed to continue the same policy. It's already there. So it's not like, it's not like any new legislation has to be created. It's already there. You just have to enforce it. Right now, Texas is trying to enforce the southern border. Joe Biden sent lawyers to sue Texas and prevent them from doing that. That is crazy. I never even thought, I never even imagined that the left wing in the country would be fighting tooth and nail to yeah, keep the border open. That, that That's crazy. While, they're, while they have the legal action that uh, Texas is still ever uh, able to enforce its border. That's right. But you got it right. Able yeah. To do that. So yeah. You're, you're I mean, obviously reading just, up on it. It's just, yeah, I mean, well, I hear about it all the time. Is that still not shocking that the federal government is, is basically no, I mean, battling with the state that wants to protect its border? I mean, I think that, I mean, in my four decades of being alive in America, but I've seen this kind of stuff happen like all the time, so it doesn't surprise me. Uh, You've seen think, it happen? Yeah, I've seen that. The fact that the federal government and states are all constantly b battling for how how to enforce rules, you know. Oh, you're not talking and, about the border. You're just talking yeah, in general. I'm just talking about. I see. In general. You say you believe it's a crisis. I believe the the drugs coming over are definitely part of the. Crisis, what about the yeah. people? Do you think there's anything wrong with between eight and ten million people just since Biden was inaugurated having come into the country illegally through the southern border? No, I think it's a country built on immigration. Um, we should definitely be welcoming immigrants. Um, and I think that, sure, people should be uh, following the laws around our immigration, but if they're not educated on those laws, that they shouldn't be, like, penalized for it. They should be educated while they're here. And if that's not something they want to go through, then, then at that point, turn them away. You mentioned that we're a country of immigrants. You know, people can still legally come here. Uh, people are, the cartels and the people coming up are actually deliberately taking advantage of the lax border laws the United States has right now to enter the country. And they're, they're entering the country illegally. We're also a country of law and order. And I think that when we have, that's the beautiful, the, the best and worst thing about America is that we can continue to have conversations and debate about what, yeah. we, what we think is best yeah. for our places. So that's why we have, 
of that state governor saying, you know what, this is the law of the land of Texas and this is how we want to protect our citizens. And then we have our, our, our federal government saying, you know what, this is not best for the no, country. No, but it's the law of the land for the federal government as well. Yeah. They're just simply, Joe Biden has simply rejected his constitutional duty to protect the American people. It's the federal government's job. It's not like a debate on policy. Right. That's not it at all. There's the federal government that has a law in the books and they're ignoring be, it. We would be, we'd be naive to think that, you know, people don't stretch the law to... Uh, this is ignoring the law, by the way. Yeah, stretch the law or ignore, ignore the law or however you want to uh, uh, put it to uh, go into what, what they feel is what they feel is best or, oh gosh, it's a word I want to say, like um, their priorities. Uh, you know, like every politician is going to do that. If an illegal immigrant didn't come here, my son wouldn't be here. My wife wouldn't be here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the uh, major problem with illegal immigration is it's not just it's not only just good people coming here for a better life. You also have armed cartels, gangs. You okay. have and drug you smugglers. Have, you have human smugglers. You, you have, have terrorists. Yeah, you have poli when you have politicians touching kids. So it, all 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 this stuff that has to do with too. the cartel at the southern but, border. But it's still it's still no matter what it's always going to be something. No, something, no, I understand that. But what is the what does the corrupt politician have to do with, uh, Wait, okay, with, we, okay, with we have cartels dealers, at the southern border? We have drug dealers here in Huntington Beach. Yeah. Probably right right down here walking amongst us. So there, there's what's not the, about what's the, the argument that you're making it's, there. It's Should not we about not the cartel? It's not. It's, it's not about the cartel. It's not about it. It's going to be. It's going to be corruption no matter what. No matter. Should we try to make the cartels' jobs harder? Well, how about we just focus on more trying to. Okay, I said. Yeah. Hey, wait, wait, hold on, sir, hold on, sir. No, I, wait, I, don't, wait. I don't want to be part of that. No, I don't mean no disrespect. Hey, nobody said I was a Biden fan. No, I know. Hey, have a good day. He's an open borders fan. No, it's actually worse than being a Biden fan. No, I so I love them. We have a, we have issues at home. Therefore, abandon southern border. Therefore, don't talk about it. Therefore, because when they're when they're bringing that up that argument, they're deflecting. They're saying, look, we have organized crime here. Okay, great. What does that have to do with uh, the cartels controlling the southern border? I'm yeah. not really sure. I mean, you're always gonna have crime in America being committed by Americans. These people are not American. They're not supposed to be here. So yeah, I mean, we shouldn't have to deal with their crime. I know that. Uh, specifically, um, my father's side of the family, who is entirely Jewish, uh, escaping the Holocaust, that I know they didn't come over following the laws, and they were educated on those laws when they got here and yeah. participated in that process. Yeah, there's a difference between immigration today and immigration back in the 1930s and 40s. People didn't get a bunch of free freebies when they came here in the early 1900s. Today you have free housing, free schooling, free, edu free food. Uh, all of that. There's a major difference. So uh, we're talking about today's immigration, not necessarily comparing it to the 1800s and early 1900s, because it's not even close to the same thing. So I mean, I, I would disagree. Um, I, my that family doesn't come from wealth, um, but and they definitely received assistance. Um, but I, I'm also I also come from the position where nobody should go without water, food, housing. Um, so the fact that, that that assistance is there, even even if they limit that amount of time, um, so there definitely could be moves made on that where they limit that amount of time where you have to, where yes, you can get this certain amount of time, maybe whether it's three, six, nine months um, on that assistance, and then you have to start getting a job and you have to start working and participating in society. Absolutely, but I don't think that no assistance is the answer. Why do you think we have an obligation to look out for people who aren't American? If the American government exists by and for the American people and it's paid for by the dollars that we give to the government through taxes, why are those dollars spent on providing those resources to people who aren't American? I mean, even in California, you have so many people who are homeless, who are out of work, who can't afford homes. You've got generations of people who maybe will never even own property. They're just renters. I mean, you have so many problems, and we're sending money to Ukraine, to Israel. We're facilitating the mass migration of people saying they need food and water and all these other things. Why should we as Americans try to look out for people who are non-American before even ourselves? And actually, the first thing they did when they got out of the country was break a federal law. So, I mean, again, being unaware of those laws and if you are educated as your first step, um, that and if you follow that, that law when you're educated about it, and that, that could be right on entrance, um, educated about the process you have to go through. If you don't want to follow that, then sure, uh, don't come in. And if they don't want to follow it past that point, sure, send them away. Right, nobody's doing that right now. Do you think We're that just, they're unaware yeah. that they're breaking the law when they travel in caravans to enter into I, the country? I think a lot of people are, yeah. Do you think that they would then care and go back to their home country if they just knew that they were breaking the law simply? I, I'm proposing like an ought to argument. 
Um, so like we ought to educate people who are coming into the country, whether it be legally or illegally. Well, but do you think that they would turn around if they knew that they were breaking law once they got here? Well, I don't, I don't think it would be up to them at that point. I mentally cannot come up with a humanitarian, but like firm-handed solution. Like, how do we be kind and courteous to people that like need our assistance as Americans, but then protect Americans as well? Like, you know, we don't want drugs and, you know, dangerous people coming in, but like, how do we also offer a humanitarian hand? And I, I personally can't come up with a mental solution that would do both of those things, so. Oh, I think my answer would be I reject humanitarianism. I think that we have to put American people first, and I think that trying to extend empathy and resources to people who aren't American leads to more problems than solutions for the whole world. Like, for example, we tried to be humanitarian and help out people in the Middle East, and you look at how that region has become destabilized because of America. Yeah, they gave them Weapons, like come on. So a lot, so, a lot can be done. So under it, the did, it didn't that. work out too well there. There's a difference between helping out with like food and water and like you know essential resources mm. versus offering someone weapons and a blank check. There's well, a huge difference. offering <laughs> free resources, being food, water, shelter, clothing to tens of millions of illegal aliens, means that they come in and compromise the integrity of our sovereignty as a nation take away the right of Americans to self-determination and autonomy, I think that that's not a good result either. I don't see why they can't get food, clothing, shelter in their countries. Like I said, I can't think of a solution that protects Americans, mm. but is also like, you know, kind-handed. You also have people that are coming to the country that are, that are just walking straight through the southern border. Do you think that, at the very least, they should be getting that under control and knowing who and what is coming across the southern border? Yeah, sure. We can definitely increase security on the southern border, but yeah. also remember that a majority of uh, illegal immigrants come by plane and overstay visas. That's not true. That is true. There, there's now, what's, what's your basis that. for saying that? In fact, it's not true, but also the overwhelming majority of visa overstays return home. So as far as I'm aware, and the last time I looked at the data was 2022. Mm -hmm. um, I, if that's changed since 2022, then then I'll, I'll definitely take that correction. So same data in 2022 as well. Would you then support something like a mandatory E-Verify to prevent people from being employed in this country if they don't have legal status? No, definitely not preventing employment um, for, for legal status. Um, if they want to participate in society, it, it's a catch-22. You have to, to participate in the society to gain legal status, and then you have to gain legal status to participate in society. I'm not down for that. No, absolutely not. I would say if someone comes here and overstays their visa, they should not be able to work. They should basically be unable to earn a living, and I think that would force a lot of uh, repatriation back to their home countries. You're, you're focused on more on this when there's so much more stuff that you, you should be focused on us as Americans. I, f I think we, I agree with what you're saying actually right there. We have a ton of issues in the United States. I have a problem with the United States spending hundreds of billions of dollars on illegal immigrants and benefits for, for them when we have issues and uh, homeless veterans, when we have people that can't afford rent, can't afford groceries, can't afford to raise their families. Classrooms are overflowing, hospitals overflowing. And, and right now under the Biden administration, he's allowing, on top of legal immigration, which I have no problem with, he's allowing about three million illegal immigrants to just enter the country every single year. Three million on top of already legal immigration, which again, not an issue here. We're talking about illegal immigration. We do not know who these people are. There are terrorists coming across the southern border. Last year, 112,000 people died from fentanyl. That's what the cartels are pushing through the southern border. We should be getting it under control. Is that that controversial of a take? You, you want to protect American citizens, right? Yeah. Well, so should a terrorist just be able to casually walk across the southern border? Does that seem a little bit silly? So, yeah, I, I understand. I understand you what understand you're what saying. I'm yeah, saying? I do understand what you're yeah. saying, but, but there's so, so many other things, too. Uh, so many other things. I totally agree with that. So many other things. I totally agree. <laughs> so many other things to be focused on. Well, we can chew bubble gum and walk at the same time, can't we? Yeah, there's so many, there's so, there's, there's so many things, so many other things to be focused on. I, so many, I agree that there's so many issues in the United States yeah, that we right. shouldn't be just bringing in tens of millions of people that are here illegally. We shouldn't be doing that. We should be taking care of Americans. Um, did you grow up in California by chance? No, I grew up in New Jersey, uh, ra uh, basically raised on like being able to navigate the streets of Manhattan. Yeah. So I spent a lot of time in New York City. I spent a lot of my, my entire life in New Jersey. Um, so very similar policies, uh, very similar economy. You know, California actually didn't used to be a blue state. 
This is the state that produced Ronald Reagan and Richard Nixon. They both won this state when they ran for president. I mean, this was a solid red state. It became a blue state because of Reagan's amnesty in 1986, where he said that we're going to compromise with the Democrats. But that flipped the state to being permanently a blue state. And in our grandparents' generation, you could come out to California, paradise, and you could afford a home in a safe neighborhood, a car, all with a high school diploma. And the reason you can't do that now is because of both illegal and legal immigration. If you look at the stats on we, uh, worker productivity versus wages, as industrialization occurs, it's matching close to one to one. But once you get to about 1965, productivity goes up, but the compensation that workers receive stagnates and it plateaus. The reason for that is because in 1965, we had an immigration act called the Hard Seller Act, which basically opened up the border legally. And of course, in supplement to that, we've had the illegal migration, but it's because you've got all these people here com competing for American jobs. And basic economics is there are more people who are gonna do the jobs, people are gonna be paid less to do them. So I support an economy that prioritizes Americans. And if we can help other people too after that, that's great. But we've been getting screwed over for the better part of the last century by these types of policies. And I don't think it's comparable at all to the immigration that we saw you know, with Ellis Island, where you had people who were coming, who were building society, building jobs, things like that. These people come from one of the lowest IQ regions in the world, and education doesn't work. It doesn't make them more productive. They come here, they get on welfare, a majority of them both legal and illegal, and that's just not sustainable for a country. I mean, everything that we see now, we take for granted. But you keep this up for a couple more decades, we are going to look like Brazil. What do you think about that? So you made a few points. I'm going to first touch on IQ. There's no such thing as a lower IQ region. IQ is not malleable. IQ is not changeable. You are set with a certain IQ. Yeah. Um, so, like, the fact that, like, it, it would be irrational to, to assert that a certain place has a lower IQ on average. You disagree that Central America has one of the lowest IQs in the world in terms of on average? I would say that it's a possibility if you have data to support it. It is true. Uh, I okay, promise you. So, yeah, so I, I, w I would not, uh, like, uh, by the mere fact that IQ is not malleable, mm -hmm. that that seems irrational to me. But, I mean, if you have the data to support it, sure. Why do you think the Biden administration not only enables this, but actively dedicates resources to stopping Texan law enforcement from doing the job that they're supposed to be doing? How do you think they benefit from mass third world migration? I think the people in Davos can answer it best. They're all a clique. They all influence each other. They're all, uh, they're all in favor of destroying our borders and destroying our country, and, and, and that coincides with opportunities for business to uh, acquire cheap labor. Sure. I think the near-term focus is the elections. So if they can vote, they'll vote for him? True. Okay. Because he wants, wants them to call, come in and be Democratic votes. Did you know there was a long time where the minimum IQ that you could have to join the U.S. military, which presumably has the greatest incentive to get as many people in as possible, they cut it off at 83. So if your IQ was tested lower than 83, they said that you're probably not intelligent enough to join the U.S. military. The average IQ in many countries in Central America is lower than even that. So if they can't even be a soldier, how are they supposed to do jobs that Americans are supposed to be taking as well? Again, I, I would... It, do you have a... a a source for that to say that their IQ is lower than on average? If you Google it, it'll it'll come up. I mean, it's like settled Absolutely. science, I assure you. I got Guatemala, average IQ. 84. All right, let me look at the average IQ for the United States. It's about 100, but it's been going down because our population has been become uh, more largely filled with people 97, from 87, 82 to 97 is country. a great difference in IQ, um, especially when I'm a person with a 175 IQ. So like, yeah, sure. Um, that's not a huge difference. I, I'm about what 97 to 75. It's an 80, an 80 point difference. If you're, if you're, well, because it's a normal distribution. So if your IQ is 175, you're like in the top 0.0001 percent of intelligence. Yes. Yeah. And because of that, IQ and social scientists don't like this because, like you said, it's not malleable. It's it's hardwired and it's kind of inconvenient to acknowledge the differences in human intelligence. But IQ is the greatest predictor for all sorts of wonderful outcomes in life, be it income, longevity, uh, intact marriage, home ownership. I mean, almost any metric that you could think of for evaluating individual well-being, IQ is one of the greatest predictors for that. But people try to shelve that away and hide it because if that's true, well, then you can't just throw money at people and expect them to improve. I mean, maybe on the margins, but in terms of actually like making people's lives better, you can't just throw money at it. And that, that's a tough conversation. So either party has never been hard on immigration since I've been alive. 
Republicans or Democrats. None of them have touched it. Why haven't they touched it? He's absolutely right about that. It's yeah. because the right benefits from the corporate interests and the left benefits from the votes. There, there's been no party, even though public opinion has always pulled very negatively on both illegal and legal immigration, mm -hmm. there's been no serious president who's actually tried to clamp down on it and they because they all would. benefit from it. Yeah. Yes. No, total, you're totally right on that. However, we've never seen anything like what we're seeing now. Right now is an issue that is 10 times worse than it's been ever keeping, been. How long have you been keeping? records of it is a bit what I would say. I but think Trump did government. actually try though. I think Trump was probably the first president in my lifetime and your lifetime who did actually try. But I think because the, the swamp uh, or the uniparty or whatever you want to call it has so many moneyed interests like you said, mm -hmm. I mean he was met with roadblock after roadblock after roadblock and then his biggest achievement in terms of reducing immigration was a relatively secure border and then he did cut in half legal immigration but even that was because he had the political capital from COVID because people were scared of that at the time. Yeah. But now you know Trump's out of office and it's back to the regularly scheduled programming. I appreciate uh, you talking to us. You don't have to report this part, but they have 15 points on 200. That's a standard, a 15 points though, that's a whole standard deviation. Standard deviation, which, which is, is what, 5%? No, 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 it's like 32%. So if my IQ is average and he's got a 115, he's already like 32 percentile points higher than I am. I, I understand what you're getting at right there, but it's literally 10 times worse than it's yeah. ever been. Uh, we, we have we have more legal immigration happening or more immigration uh, comparing let's say let's we'll grab it like 1900 I, year I 1900 literally more that, than that but the only reason I don't believe that what do you is not believe that we have more than it has ever been yes I think, correct I think it's at the probably at the same rate that it has been and, and it's been periods when it slows down and it's going to be periods when it goes up what's your but, timeline for this just so I can understand so your argument here I'm gonna say like you want a good I'm couple decades say 40 years you know like okay. that immigration like it go, it's going is not going to be it's not Oh, it's absolutely this or whatever. Okay. I would say it's probably been level, you know, uh, the, just because of the way the world works. And, and just to let you know, and I'm going to give you the facts right here. You can yeah. check them out after this conversation. I'm not lying or anything like that. Um, hey, Nico, we're good. Um, sorry, I, I just want to give you some of the some of the, the data around that. So the last year, we've broken several records when it comes to most illegal crossings at our southern border and into the United States mm -hmm. in American history. Just okay. to just to let you know, and you can check that out after. Okay. Don't just take my word for it. Check it out after. Last month was the most we've ever had in American history. Okay, and it keeps getting worse. You mentioned the corporate con the, the corporate debates. I think it's fantastic that you brought that up because how on earth is importing minimum three million people illegally under the Biden administration per year helping Americans while they're struggling right they're now. I think it's anti-America literally to the T. I really do. The Democratic and the Republican Party are anti-America. So as long as we have a two-party system and we empower, uh, you know, uh, politicians that are embedded uh, or in depth to corporate America, that's what we are going to get. Look, this is what it comes down to, y'all. We spend more money, time, effort, energy, man, woman power protecting other borders and other countries than our own. It, it just, it, I'm scared. As a woman, like, I'm protected. I've got, I've got stuff inside my car to protect myself if I need to, and I shouldn't have to do that. And with, with people flooding in from the border, and you can kind of tell who's shady and who's not, plus... Um, all the gotaways of, of the criminals and the terrorists that are coming in, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah. No country allows uh, such easy access to their, uh, to their uh, you know, borders. No country on the planet. And this is coming from two people who were born outside of America, who moved to America, and we realize that this is how third world countries are created. All right, everyone, that is it for today. So the overwhelming majority of people that we spoke with definitely blame Joe Biden for the border crisis. But we did run into some liberals that basically said it wasn't his fault and then ran away. I don't know. John, how do you think the day went today? Uh, from the perspective of bringing you, the American people, the excellent content and lip triggering that you deserve, it was kind of so over, but in a much more real sense, if you can be a little uh, less selfish for a moment and understand the bigger picture, we're actually so back. OC is MAGA country. Everybody loves us. Everyone loves the Don. They're saying it's Kluge County, folks. They're saying the groundwork this guy puts in is going to, once we overthrow the Newsom administration, have this county actually be renamed. So I'm optimistic on the basis of that alone. But we had a great day. We had an excellent day. Where can people find you if they want to support you and your work? You can find me at youtube.com slash John Doyle, where I regularly and 
consistently post content, some of the best content you'll find on YouTube.com. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. You guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to leave a comment down in the comment section below. Let me know your favorite part of the video. Also, smack that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already and hit that bell notification button so you're notified next to my post. I'll catch you all in the next video. Bucket of fried chicken.